Good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for joining this Zoom session for this webinar on this very important day. A warm welcome to all of you. On this slide, you will see the next two webinars that we have lined up, that is on the September 17th and September 24th. So please keep the date and time free uh, to zoom in. They are very interesting webinars like today's one. We have also got four competitions lined up. The first two are creative writing and the art competition. Details are in these slides. And then there's a digital art competition as well, as well as a photography competition. Please note the closing dates for submission of entries. World Suicide Prevention Day is an awareness day observed on 10th September every year since 2003 to provide worldwide commitment and action to prevent suicides. The IASP collaborates with the WHO and the World Federation for Mental Health to spread awareness around the world. The theme this year is creating hope through action, which encourages all of us to consider the role that offering support may play in combating suicide. We are all part of a community linked to family, friends, work, colleagues, neighbors, or teams. Sometimes we become isolated and disconnected from our communities. Social connectedness reduces the risk of suicide. So being there for someone who has become disconnected can be a life-saving act. We have the responsibility to support and empower those who become vulnerable in our communities. If you're worried about someone in your community, reach out and ask them, are you okay? By simply checking in with them and offering non-judgmental support, you can make a big difference. It is important to know that people in distress are often not looking for specific advice but merely to be listened to with compassion and empathy. We warmly welcome all those present today who have accepted our invitation and have joined us to remember those who have chosen to end their lives having found living unbearable, unbearably painful. We will also remember those survivors whose lives have been shaken by suicide of a loved one and hope that they will be able to gather strength and support to cope and walk ahead in their lives. Sumitri has been around since 1974 to support and empower anybody going through a crisis in their lives. We also kindly request that you join us in lighting a candle wherever you are with individuals from all over the world in support of World Suicide Prevention Day at 8 p.m. this evening to remember lost loved one and the survivors of suicide. I now call upon Kanchana to read the welcome address in singular. Thank you. Thank you, Jomo. September Dahavini Dinate Editi Bene, local Sia Divi Hani Karaganima Velakini Dinea, the Das Tuna Vashi City Samarim Sidukarani, Visheshame A Piriban the Dana Kirimi Dinea Plesa. Local Sauke Samidania, Manasika Sauke Piriban the Loka Samidania, Samban the Karagani Min, Jatantra Sia Divi Hani Karaganima Velakini Samidania. The Vihani Karakan in the Velakim, a Samban name, then what Kirim, a low Pura Sidukana Labano. Memoashe Tema Vane, Kriya Tuling Balapura to Atikirim. Mematema Vahara, Diriganim Sidikon Labani, Paul Lake, Mitchell, Rakia Stane Sagi, Asal Vansi, Yanavita Akari, Ikam Samaje Kotaskarwan when upper. Unnight to Dokirim, Tidripatri Magin, the Vihani Karakan in Valapa got the Haki Bavata, Prechili the Kirimita. See the Vihani Karagani may Avadana Madukan Sada Kapani, Samajapendi. At the Mavasta Valadi, Udgali Hudakalavi, Samajan Vindi, sit in Avasta, Pradakna to Labin. Evan Navasta Valadi, Elisa Hudakalavi, Samaja Sambandata winning, Vindi sit in Udgali in Vinwin, Kale Yomukiri Maha, own to Pakari Kirimiti, Dripatwim, own Gaji with the Araksha Kirimita Pava, Hetu and Veta. Elisa Avadana metal acquired the Pudgal in Kerihi, Avadana Avadana Mukirima, own to Pakara Kirima. Never the Tiran again in Mudesa, own a dirigan Vima, up a Samagi, Wagakima Peno. Oba Avata city in a Kisiriki Hopilman of Kanasal in city in a own a Tobagi Avadana Mukarla, 
ඔවුන්ගේ ඔබ හොඳින්ද කියා අසන්න එම සරල ප්‍රශ්න ඇසීමෙන් සහ ඔවුන් ගැන කිසිදු විනිශ්චයකින් තොරව උපකාර කිරීමට ඉදිරිපත් වීම මගින් ඔවුන්ගේ ජීවිතය තුළ විශාල වෙනසක් සිදු කිරීමට ඔබට හැකියි අපි විශේෂයෙන්ම තේරුම් ගත යුතු දේ වන්නේ පීඩාවට පත් වී සිටින පුද්ගලයෙකු සෑම විටම අවවාද බලාපොරොත්තු නොවන බව ඔවුන් විශේෂයෙන්ම බලාපොරොත්තු වන්නේ සානුකම්පිතව සහ සහකම්පණයෙන් යුතුව ඇහුම්කම් දීමක් බවත් ඇත ජීවත් වීම ඉතා වේදනාකාරී බව සිතා සිය ජීවිතයෙන් සමුගත් සියලු දෙනා සිහි කිරීමට අද දිනේ අපගේ ආරාධනේ පිළිගෙන අපහා සම්බන්ධ වී සිටින ඔබ සියලු දෙනා මේ අවස්ථාවේදී අපි ඉතා ආදරයෙන් පිළිගන්නවා තවද දිවි දිවි හානි කර ගැනීමට උත්සාහ කර එයින් මිදුන අයටද තම ආදරණීයකුගේ දිවි හානි කර ගැනීමක් නිසා තදබල ලෙස කම්පණයට පත් වූ සියලු දෙනාද මේ අවස්ථාවේදී අපි ඉතා ආදරයෙන් මතක් කර සිටින අතර ඔවුන්ට ජීවිතේ ඉදිරියට යාමට අවශ්‍ය ශක්තිය හා උපකාරය ලැබේවායිද ප්‍රාර්ථනා කර සිටිනවා 1974 වර්ෂයේ සිට මේ දක්වා පීඩාකාරී අවස්ථාවලට මුහුණ දෙන ඕනෑම කෙනෙකුට චිත්ත වේගී යහ පැවැත්ම පවත්වාගෙන යාමට නිවැරදි තීරණ ගැනීම සඳහා දිරි ගැන්වීමට සේවය සැපයීම සුමිත්‍ර ආදිනේ මගින් සිදු කරනවා ලෝක සිය දිවි හානි කර ගැන වැලැක්වීම දිනේ සනිටුවන්ත් කරමින් අද රාත්‍රී 8ට ඔබ සිටින ස්ථානයේ සිටම ලෝපුරා සිටින සියලු දෙනා සමග එක්ව සිය දිවි හානි කරගත් සහ එයින් දිවි බේරාගත් ආදරණීය යන් සිහිපත් කරමින් අප හා එක්ව පහනක් දාලවන මෙන් අප ඊටා කරුණාවෙන් ඉල්ලා සිටිනවා and now i would like to call upon nandani to deliver the uh, speech in tamil thank you kanjana dunia thala moolam unaindirukkum anaivarukkum vanakkam ulaga tatkolai taduppu dinam enbadu 2003 aam aandu mudal ovvaru aandum september maadam 10 aam thigadi vulippunarvu dinamaga anusarikkapadukirathu இது உலகளாவிய அர்ப்பணிப்பு மற்றும் தற்கொலைகளை தடுக்க நடவடிக்கை எடுக்கிறது உலகெங்கிலும் விழிப்புணர்வை பரப்புவதற்கு வலி ஆய்வுக்கான சர்வதேச சங்கம் உலக சுகாதார சங்க அமைப்புடன் ஒருங்கிணைந்து மற்றும் மனநலத்திற்கான உலக கூட்டமைப்பும் ஆகியவற்றுடன் ஒத்துழைக்கிறது இந்த ஆண்டு கருப்பொருள் செயல் மூலம் நம்பிக்கையை உருவாக்குதல் இது தற்கொலையை எதிர்த்து போராடுவதில் ஆதரவை வழங்குவதற்கான பங்கை கருத்தில் கொள்ள நம் அனைவரையும் ஊக்குவிக்கிறது நாங்கள் அனைவரும் ஒரு சமூகத்தின் ஒரு பகுதியாக இருந்து குடும்பம் நண்பர்கள் பணிபுரியும் சக ஊழியர்கள் அண்டை வீட்டார்கள் அல்லது குழுக்களுடன் இணைக்கப்பட்டுள்ளோம் சில சமயங்களில் நாம் தனிமைப்படுத்தப்பட்டு நமது சமூகங்களில் இருந்து துண்டிக்கப்படுகிறோம் சமூக தொடர்பு தற்கொலை ஆபத்தை குறைக்கிறது எனவே துண்டிக்கப்பட்ட ஒருவருடன் இருப்பது ஒரு உயிரை காப்பாற்றும் செயலாகும் எங்கள் சமூகங்களில் பாதிக்கப்படக்கூடியவர்களுக்கு ஆதரவளித்து அதிகாரம் அளிக்கும் பொறுப்பு எங்களுக்கு உள்ளது உங்கள் சமூகத்தில் உள்ள ஒருவரை பற்றி நீங்கள் கவலைப்பட்டால் நீங்கள் நலமாக இருக்கிறீர்களா என்று அவர்களிடம் கேளுங்கள் அவர்களின் நலத்தை விசாரித்து பாரா பச்சமின்றி ஆதரவை வழங்குவதன் மூலம் நீங்கள் மாற்றத்தை ஏற்படுத்தலாம் துன்பத்தில் உள்ளவர்கள் பெரும்பாலும் குறிப்பிட்ட அறிவுரைகளை தேடுவதில்லை மாறாக இரக்கத்துடன் அனுதாபத்துடன் முனைப்புடன் செவிமடுக்க வேண்டும் என்பதை அறிவது முக்கியம் எங்களின் அழைப்பை ஏற்று தாங்க முடியாத வேதனையுடன் வாழ்க்கையை முடித்துக் கொள்ள தேர்ந்தெடுத்தவர்களை நினைவு கூற எங்களுடன் இணைந்திருக்கும் அனைவருக்கும் இன்று அன்புடன் வரவேற்கின்றோம் நாம் நேசிப்பவரின் தற்கொலையை இன்னும் உயிருடன் இருப்பவர்களை நினைவு கூறுவோம் மேலும் அவர்கள் தாங்கள் வாழ்க்கையை சமாளிப்பதற்கும் முன்னேறுவதற்கும் வலிமையையும் ஆதரவையும் சேகரிக்க முடியும் என்று நம்புகிறோம் சுமித்ரையோ ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி எழுபத்தி ஆறாம் நாலாம் ஆண்டு அவர்களின் வாழ்க்கையில் நெருக்கடிகளை சந்திக்கும் எவருக்கும் ஆதரவளித்து அதிகாரம் அளிப்பதற்காக செயல்பட்டு வருகிறார்கள் உலக தற்கொலை தடுப்பு தினத்திற்கு ஆதரவாக இன்று இரவு எட்டு மணிக்கு தற்கொலையால் இறைவனாடி எய்தியோரையும் தற்கொலை முயற்சியில் ஈடுபட்டு உயிர் பிழைத்தவர்களையும் நிறைவு கூறும் வகையில் உலகம் முழுவதிலும் இருக்கும் தனிநபர்களுடன் நீங்களும் எங்கிருந்தாலும் மெழுகு வர்த்தி ஏற்றி எங்களுடன் சேருமாறு அன்புடன் கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறோம் நன்றி எஸ் ஜோமோ யூ கேன் தேங்க்யூ ஐ வுட் லைக் டு கிவ் ஆல் ஆஃப் 
consultant community physician. Uh, Dr. M. Ganeshan, senior consultant psychiatrist at the NIMH. Dr. Neil Fernando, senior consultant psychiatrist and senior lecturer at Kotalawala Defense University. I now call upon Dr. Rohan Ratnayaka to make the keynote speech. Good evening, uh, everyone, uh, the chairperson, <coughs> directors, and staff of uh, Sumitrio, and resource persons, and all those who are present here today. So I have a great pleasure working with uh, Sumitrio, which is doing a great service to the people in this country. Dear ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> there is an alternative to most of our grievances. <coughs> This is true in suicides too. Simple actions can give hope to those who are struggling. We all can play a vital role in saving lives. We can make a difference to someone in their difficult moments. May it someone experiencing suicidal crisis or bereaved by suicides. There is no one fit for all strategy and it has to be individualized. Someone having suicidal thoughts may feel that they are, <clears throat> they are a burden to their loved ones and feel alone. Recent developments in the country have contributed to and aggravated this feeling of isolation. We need to create an environment that they hope that there are people who care and want to support them. This is not, the, the helping is not strange to us. We always devalue our significance and think that only professionals can help. But it is not true. Reach in and listen to their experiences of distress and suicidal thought. Create a, create a sense of connection and hope. Personal stories of someone's experiences of emotional distress, suicidal thoughts or suicidal attempts and recovery if any, and their inner world can help us understand feeling suicidal and how they can, how we can help others. Sharing experiences of overcoming of being bereaved, having have inspiring and hope in those having the same experiences. It is not fair to have one dedicated day to talk about losing our precious lives. Every moment when someone needs our help is Suicidal Prevention Day. However, this is not the practical scenario. So we can create an opportunity to raise awareness of suicide and sensitize the policymakers of the gravity of the problem on this particular day. The theme in every year may be different but the message or the action is the same. That is to reach out to those who need help. Ask directly if they are thinking about suicide. Listen to them and keep them safe. Let them know that we have something for them. Suggest if, if we think there is a need of a mental health professional, suggest to them. And ladies and gentlemen, no one is immune to having suicidal thought. It doesn't care for uh, the, the race, religion, creed or any social status. Let, let them seek immediate help from a trusted friend or family member or healthcare provider. If they have suicidal thoughts, 
ask them to seek professional help. Ask them not to act on their thoughts right now and try to focus on just getting through today. You might have, uh, you might have had these sort of uh, thoughts earlier too, but you are able to cope up in a few days and keep them safe and encourage them to talk to people. Being around and encourage them to be being around <coughs> people, even if they don't want to talk to. Try doing things that they are enjoying by raising awareness and encouraging culturally appropriate actions, we can reduce suicides. Sri Lanka experienced uh, 3,200 suicides in 2021. World Suicide Prevention Day is an opportunity to raise awareness of suicides and to promote action through practical ways. This will reduce the number of suicides and suicide attempts. Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Be kind always. Mental health is a right of the people. Subha Sandhyavak Veva. अरमुनुथ अभी हम देना आटम अनित्या के जीवित आरक्षा करेगा ना ये वाके में जीवित लक्षण करेगा ना अवस्था तीन बाबा क्या लग देने का अभी तो वो ना तरह का अवस्था तीन है अनित्या के जीवित लक्षण कराना ये वाके में 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 प्रश्न है कि ना में सीधी भी हाने करेगा नहीं में प्रश्न है तीन बार पतल काम के ना किया देने का अ एक वाक्य की मार्के वाक्य में में के एक ऑब्जेक्टिव है आप हम आज रख कम सिविली नशा के नहीं बालक पर के नहीं में दिने थे मावल बिना सुनाते दिन फाने विदे एकाए इनाम जीवित गैनयन आवश्य उदाव वोना ऐट उदाव करने का वो कतमाय अतर में हम आउर दिन में आप इटे दिन नौ ना फाने विदे ओने में कहने कुटे जीवितीय नतीकरण गनी में सिद्ध विली ओने में विलाव का पहल विल्ले पुलवा एक अट आपे तरातीर में आग में जाती अदालन है इतने ओन उन टे सांद देना ओन आरक्षित दायित्व बालना ओन वेन वेन आपटे कल है कि या मां कल है कि बाबा ओन टे इतुगान ना आपे हितनो आनंग मानसिक साउंड के हाँ संबंध वृत्त के उगे उदाव अवश्य है कि ला एक यहाँ लट योजना कराने खास अमग हरी यहाँ लट खता कराने दिरी गानवान समारोह लट यहाँ लट खता कराने अवश्य भी नतीवे यह मुमत काटिया सेनेग न जावसना अनित्य इन्ना तनक यहाँ लट काले गता कराने दिरी गानवान अद्यतावस्थ गाता करने का गैने पामनक एकोलांगे हितायम करवान मीठे पेरे एकोलांग मेवागे सितुली तीन नेती ये वा सार्थ को जागा न तेती ऐहम तीन आना ये वा गैने किया लग देनो जीविते यातातात्ते टे दिन की पेकिंग आये पत्ते नवाई तीने का या लटे किया लग देनो इतिंग साउक्या मात्य अंशे पत्ते न गत्तम आपी गुड़ाक प्यामार गार्गन तीनों में प्यामार जब आप गुड़ाक करने तीनों सीधी भी हानि करेंगे नहीं बालक भी ये मटे हम हेमोगिम हेमोटम आराधना करने में आप इसेर माया 
මේ සමාජ සත්කාරය මේ සෝෂල් රෙස්පොන්සිබිලිටි එකට අපි දායක වෙන්න කියලා අපි සේරමයි එක්ක හොයම කියන එක. මම හිතන්නේ මේ අපි කවුරුත් දන්නවා මානසික සෞඛ්‍යයක් නැති තැන සෞඛ්‍යයක් නැහැ. There is no health without mental health. ඉතින් අද දින මෙම වැඩසටහන මේ සංවිධාන මේ සුමිත්‍රයෝ ආයතනයේ විසින් සංවිධානය කරපු මේ වැඩසටහන එම ආයතනයේ ගොඩාක් මාහන්සි වෙලා තියෙන මේක සංවිධානය කරන්න. ඉතින් අපි මම පෞද්ගලිකවත් නමුත් සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යාංශයේ නියෝජනය කරන කෙනෙක් විදිහට මම එම ආයතනයේ සභාපති ඇතුළු එම අධ්‍යක්ෂ මණ්ඩලයයි කාර්ය මණ්ඩලයටයි ගොඩක් ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙනවා මේ වගේ වැඩසටහන් අපි රාජ්‍ය නොවන සංවිධාන විසින් මේවා අතට අරගෙන පවත්නක ගැන ස්තුතියි Thank you very much uh, Dr Ratnayaka for that uh, very interesting keynote address which gave us an overview of suicide in Sri Lanka thank you so much for finding the time would like to get on with uh, asking the panelists some questions interesting questions and uh, i uh, request all of you who have zoomed in to use the q and a at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions that you feel that you need to know about more about and the panelists will be very happy to answer them i at the end of the session so moving on to the first question to the panelists uh, dear doctors in sri lanka behaviors that lead to self harm often arise impulsively with little or no warning or no history of depression a family quarrel or sudden disappointment appointment might cause feelings of rejection frustration and anger leading to an attempt such thoughts can develop in a matter of hours or even minutes leaving very little time for family or friends to see the danger signs and intervene people going through this sudden distress don't have time to reflect on their thoughts or try to speak to someone this can pose real challenges for suicide prevention in sri lanka dr neil fernando how can stakeholders and gatekeepers help people to acquire life skills to help them navigate and survive such moments of impulsiveness should we consider including this as a compulsory subject in the school curriculum okay thank you uh, for inviting me for this very interesting uh, discussion and i would also like to echo the same words uh, stated earlier by our director of mental health that sumitro has always taken a leading role in when it comes to suicide prevention so thank you very much for organizing not only here but every year uh, on this very interesting and very important uh, subject suicide prevention now uh, your question to answer that question i look at the suicide as a process it is a process and this process for our convenience or for our easy understanding which is a which is a very very complicated process uh, but it is uh, easy to understand this process as having three stages namely the first stage would be the suicidal intent i will name it as the intention stage following the intention you go into the second stage that is the suicidal act that is the physical act that uh, follows the intention and thirdly you get the third phase which is the outcome of that action or the act and the outcome can be either the person uh, has died then it becomes suicide labeled as suicide or the person can survive 
which is then called, of course, there is no one uh, uni universal word for this. Uh, people call it suicidal attempt or attempted suicide or some people even call it para-suicide. But anyway, that is the third stage. So in the third stage, they have two groups actually. One who have actually died as a result of that, which is called suicide. And the other group which has survived that, right. So this is the process that goes on. Now, each one will travel in this process at different speeds. Now you mentioned about this impulsive acts. Uh, impulsive act by definition is, uh, impulsive act is an act a person engages in without uh, thinking about the consequences. I mean, that is the common understanding about an impulsive act. So, you can have impulsive acts in relation to suicidal behavior as well. Now, in an impulsive act, what happens is that this process of starting from the intention, then the suicidal act and the outcome is actually a sort of fast forwarded, right? It goes very fast. And as a result of that, a person will travel through these stages very, very fast. Now, as opposed, that is in, at one extreme. As opposed to that, you have the other extreme where this process can be very, very slow or prolonged. So that the person may live with a suicidal intention, gradually taking increasing momentum, uh, but over a period of time, and then may indulge in an act, or that may also be sometimes prolonged. The person may start the act and then may stop it, and again might start it like that. Uh, so the act itself can be also prolonged, and of course the outcome. The outcome is the same, either the person has died or the person has survived. So, uh, this is how I look at this process. So, in Sri Lanka, we find uh, people engaging in these two ways. One is the impulsive way, which you mentioned. Other one is a, 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 a slow process. Uh, uh, going on a slow way. Now, when it comes to prevention, uh, it is, obviously, it is easy to prevent the second group rather than the first group. Because the first group uh, who, who act impulsively uh, in a very short period uh, may, we may, the chances of preventing it might be sometimes even almost impossible. But there is also a difference. Now, that's why I said this is complicated. Now, if you look at the people who end up in this process, that is those who have died and those who have survived. When you look at these two groups, there are certain differences in the two groups also. In the group that who dies, that is the people who commit suicide, there are more males. And this is a worldwide phenomenon, right? I think if I remember correctly, uh, for every four suicides, three are males. So males outnumber females in the first group, that is the people who die. Whereas in the second group, you have more females right? More females. But again, when it comes to Sri Lanka, again, things are complicated. If you look at the Sri Lankan situation, this male to female ratio is also reducing. Also reducing. In other words, uh, the, 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 the stated uh, difference that is 3 to 1 uh, suicide uh, is 
is also changing in Sri Lanka. So these are, that's why I said these are very complicated issues. But this is how I look at it. So uh, one other point before I finish, the this to be called uh, act as suicide, I think the intention becomes very, very important. Intention to die. Intention to die. Now, and if you look at the WHO definition, suicide has, has three parts. And all three have to be there for it to be named as suicide. First is it's a process that ends with death. So there should be a death at the end of the process. Then the process has to be started and conducted by the person himself or herself. That is the, that is the, uh, the intention part. And also the third one is that the person should know that the person is going to die as a result of this act. And actually that is the wish of the person. So this is the exact definition of suicide. Uh, but as we, as we know, um, um, any impulsive act resulting in death is now labeled as suicide. Neighbor as suicide. So that is why now there is another process called a psychological autopsy. This is a psychological mechanism to really find out what was the real intention of this particular person, whether it was really to die or whether it is something else that lead, led to this behavior. Now, that, that second group is where the intention is not to die. Now, the intention may be to seek attention, maybe to manipulate another person, or maybe just a reaction to an ongoing stress. Whatever the, whatever the intention, the intention is not to die. Not to die. So, that is something that, is something that we need to bear in mind. So, uh, I think uh, I will stop there. Do you want me to discuss this also, summarize it in single or someone uh, else? Yeah. If, you, if you can quickly do that, Doc. Right, okay. Uh, not taking much time. Then, yes. Mama, I have to say, I have to ask you a question. 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 Terungkan apa hasil itu? Ia diari pelbagai ni, diari tamai cetana, si adivi nasaga ni me cetana, e cetana itu hat gihilla kriawa kita perle no, itu ni tamai si adivi nasaga ni kriawa sidda we ni ke bau tika kriawa, e kriawa prati pale akhati itu no, tu me ni adiara, e ke e prati pale e ko me anda pulua me agi otapi ke no si adivi naga takila me agi e natang api kira siapa di bina ganda utsah kerak kira. Jadi, me meka meka api saralo mehma kiu ada meka tiak sangki negri awal. Eka tu honda udah halnya. Tamae ara awasan ni lebih na prati pali diha belu. Api tu pena utsah. Siapa di bina ganda tak gede beri pura ini kiri miparshe. Siapa di bina ganda utsah ganda gede beri pura ini kanta pasi. Meka loke samaning hamat anamu tiada perubahan tawa. Jadi, kalau pernah, me, 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 hamum, me, siapa dewi nasi agi ni, me, kriya, we, ini na hamum, sama ane na aki ni kai. Jadi, kalau pernah skanti, ini bagi me Lanka, me kat awat sangki, me, me, Lanka, we api tu pernah, me, degol la terati, na me, Venus, me, Sri Purusha, Venus, ini anu pati, adu egan ya, na bawa api tu pernah. Jadi, kalau, ini bagi me, api rata siapa dewi nasi agi ane na pramane, then. Rohan kiuwa tundas kanak kiri lagi awal de, oh anu pahed di meka nama das kanak ti puna, dan nama dah hendela tundah ada dua lagi no, eka honda i, hebat ya api mada dia kan no na siadu i naga kan do utsa kan na, eke pramanya adu lagi na, 
समहार अवधान प्रतिक्रियालाकीर्ण Thank you very much, Dr. Neil, for that very, very detailed uh, response and explanation, which I'm sure all the viewers would have appreciated. I'll move on to the next uh, question. Uh, Self-harming can be caused by economic, social, and political turbulence, or a culturally culturally embedded response to interpersonal disputes. For example, arguments between spouses, parents, and children, and some extended kin. Failed love affairs, extramarital affairs, and failed examinations and job opportunities are also frequently cited. In many cases, shame is recognized as a leading cause. Self harm to end one's life may be attempted to escape shame or to cause shame to another person, and even to extract revenge. In many cases, these attempts may be a means of communicating one's psychological and emotional needs. Dr. Ganesh, and can you give us your thoughts on all of this? How can information on other options available be disseminated to the community? Ah, thank you very much, uh, Jomo, for uh, asking me that question, and thank you first for Sumitra for inviting me, uh, because suicide is a big issue in Sri Lanka. Uh, so yeah, so what you asked is very important. Like, why do we commit suicide or attempt suicide? Uh, it's a very important question because sometimes when we see the reasons look very trivial and uh, uh, very nonsensical, and uh, uh, that's kind of a, uh, uh, we don't pay enough attention importance to that so one of the problem is that when we are very emotional aroused uh, whatever the emotion right i mean usually when it's suicide it's the negative emotions uh, what happens is our thinking processes are cut off that our frontal lobe which is uh, very important for logical rational thinking is not actually working and that's what uh, dr ni fernando and you said this impulsive acts so very often when we become emotional we act uh, do various things either violence against others or sometimes violence against yourself which we feel ashamed after when we analyze it so so that is one important aspect teaching our youth teaching our people not to do anything when we are highly emotional when i am very happy i tend to spend money unnecessarily when i am very unhappy either i am nasty to other people or nasty to myself when i am very sad i thinking of suicide or hurting myself so when we are in a highly aroused emotional state not to take any decisions or not to do any activities this highly aroused emotional state is not going to last very long it's going to last maybe 5 10 minutes max okay. so at that moment when we are highly aroused emotionally suicide may appear as the only solution so very important thing is knowing that i am highly emotionally aroused anger sadness frustration whatever and i'm not going to do anything now i'm going to take wait 10 15 minutes until my emotion settles and then let us see what's the best way forward so that is something that we can teach our children and that can be like you asked in the first question can be included in the school curricula teach people to 
identify this highly aroused emotional states. We have all been there. For whatever reasons, we get highly angry, highly sad, etc. So, so that is very important. And also this concept of shame. Where do we learn it? Are we born with it? No, we are not. Right? So it's the society that teaches shame. Right? Uh, comparing with other children, undervaluing our children, see you are not good as other child, see the other child is getting better marks, the other child is an obedient child, see how proud their parents will be. You know, unfortunately, these are common things that children hear in Sri Lankan homes. And, and that inculcates a sense of shame, a sense of failure. And, and then any threat on shame, on, on their self-being, uh, is seen as a major problem. So they're teaching our children that, of course, we will make mistakes. We are not going to be successful in a lot of things. And uh, creating a sense of self-worth in us. Hey, you are valuable for us, whatever marks you get. We are valuable for us, uh, you know, you don't excel in sports or something. So, unfortunately, that's not the message children are hearing in their homes. Children are hearing in the schools as well. Right? So, shaming children and making them sensitive to shame is not a very good idea. <clears throat> and But unfortunately, that seems to be a trend. And, and shame has become such a kind of a huge elephant in the room or whatever you would call it. Right? That kind of a drives a lot of our behaviors, which bring us lots of unhappiness. And, and as you said, to, I mean, even suicides and suicide attempts. Yes. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. That was a great reply and a great response. And I'm sure everybody would have appreciated it, especially your thoughts on shame. I feel that that's very, very important for everybody to consider. And your comment that shame, we are not born with shame, but we acquire it through social engagements and uh, probably missiles from society. Thank you so much. Uh, on to my third question. Uh, the Sri Lankan Health Service has reduced the maternal mortality rates to 30 per 100,000 in 2020, which is great. In contrast, the rates of maternal suicide have shown an upward trend from 0 0.8, 0 0.8 per 100,000 live births in 2002 to a rate of 12.1 per 100,000 live births in 2010. This data after 2010 does not seem to be available, so I can only bring forward the 2010 data. Uh, which is quite alarming. The effect of suicide during pregnancy or during the intermediate postpartum period is far reaching. Apart from the calamity of the loss of life of a mother, it impacts on living children, family, and community. Early identification, referral, and management of high risk mothers is likely to help reduce this tragic outcome. Dr. Ratnayaka, can we have your views on this situation, which is hardly brought up in forums about suicide? Yes. <laughs> yes. But, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, what you said is uh, true. That the one reason for this is uh, uh, the, the 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 our the maternal uh, death rates uh, death rates uh, are in par with uh, the the most developed countries. So. So our, we, we have reduced maternal deaths uh, to a great extent. Right? Yes. Our health services 
improve the services in Sri Lanka to Langa with the emergency care improve the Maumar Nevagi Aduena Aduna Aduena Wagame then proper then may Pratishatia with the other suicide skin get what value we know and very well at you know I think that uh the the proportionately yes that the Swiss proportionately yeah suicides have have uh, gone up and uh, the 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 agency which is uh, working towards uh, the the maternal ties family health bureau so we are working closely with the family health bureau uh, to mitigate this uh, the, 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 <laughs> This and the other thing, uh, we have already prepared uh, the tools to identify early. I thought, Api Danatamat may Paul Sauk Aranchat Hovela Maharabe Api Vela Sanim may Mawarungi, may Mawarungi, CDV Hani Karagani, but uh, in a situvili in a ever uh, uh, Kanduna again, eh? Ecolanga, uh, Ape Manichika Sauke, uh, the professional clinic Langa, Eva Himanatang, I get risk in a clang, uh, Yomukiranek, Danatamat, Nikatama, Kagane, and I take a Mahitane, Ekatarak Nebe, then are they? Uh, Dr. Neil Fernando Katakarapu, psychological uh, autopsy, then uh, uh, suicide, uh, maternal suicide, so and we have uh, we have already piloted the not uh, the, the suicide, the, the psychological autopsy for all the suicides uh, in Kampaha district, but due to the the the, uh, the past the. Uh, the, the all the failed conditions in the country, COVID and other, yeah, and the petrol and all. So we had to stop temporarily, right? Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yes, yes doctor. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ranaikov. And can I, Dr. Can I add and to that? Yes, can and I, I want to add. Please. Can I add to what uh, Rohan said? Yes. Uh, now, uh, pregnancy is a very <laughs> vulnerable period of a woman's life from a mental health point of view. So we need to be on the watch out for that. And pregnancy and the postpartum period, that is the after the delivery, yes. that period is a vulnerable period. In fact, even in our law, in our law, it is recognized as a vulnerable period. Okay. So if a mother, if a mother kills her own baby under the age of one year, that mother is not charged with uh, uh, the normal uh, penal offense of murder. It is, uh, it is actually downgraded to uh, a thing called infanticide. Oh, right. Now, why is that? Because the law itself recognizes that due to the pregnancy and the effects of lactation, a mother's mental state is not completely balanced. So as a result of that, uh, an offense where she kills her own baby, of course the baby has to be under the age of 12 months, then that is regarded as a, the responsibility of that offense is uh, lesser than of that of a homicide. And the judge has the discretion. Now that's the important thing. If it is a murder, judge has no discretion. If the the if the the accused is uh, proven to be guilty, then the judge has to impose the death penalty, as we all know. Yes, yes. But when it comes to infanticide, the judge has the discrepancy. Uh, uh, judge has the um, uh, the the freedom to decide the penalty. And okay. usually, what happens is that, you know, from a practical point of view, is that the judge is very lenient on this in the sense based on okay. medical evidence. Okay. Uh, uh, generally, uh, uh, a lenient, still it's an offense, but the punishment can be 
usually very lenient or what we call a suspended sentence for a period. So that itself shows that this is a very vulnerable period. And uh, uh, to add to what uh, Rohan said, actually there is a screening of all mothers mm -hmm. after delivery at, the, at one month to identify uh, postpartum depression. Uh, and that is something that has been done now over the years to detect, as Rohan said, depression early uh, and then necessary action to be taken. And uh, recently, the psychological autopsy, of course, that is after the tragic event, okay. uh, 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 psychological investigation uh, is done to find out what really went wrong in, this, in that particular okay. mother. Thank you, Dr. Neil. Very, very informative. Okay, find out. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ganesan, can I quickly ask you a follow-up on that? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, Dr. Now, uh, since uh, I, I like to know whether, whether mental health screening is done to a mother during pregnancy in the nine months leading up, but that is the most important period where mental health issues can develop and can be detected and assessed. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the screening is a good attempt in a way to uh, find the, the people at risk. But the, the, the problem is, I don't think the screening alone uh, is going to solve the problem because okay. like you said, sometimes the, the as other speakers also said, the, the, the idea of ending the life comes in five minutes and then it's, it's all done within the next 10, 15 minutes. So in that sort of instance, just screening for a loan uh, is not going to be helpful. Right. Okay. Uh, because when somebody is screening, the person may be perfectly well and okay. then have a fight uh, with somebody or argument with somebody or harm some by the financial stress, they might commit suicide because of some issue around shame or whatever. So the important thing is close emotional support for those people. The screening can help us to identify depression, uh, which is a cause for postpartum suicides. But as you said, unfortunately, that's not the only cause. So we attribute uh, suicides, about 40% of suicides to, to depression, depressive illness. So to some extent, the screening can pick that up, but okay. not all mothers at risk. So having close supportive relationships, teaching husbands and others to show consideration, to care for the, uh, the woman, and also during the pregnant time, <clears throat> teaching the mothers of the problems that they are going to face after having the baby. Okay. You know, it can be lost nights, it can be feeding issues, it can be financial issues. So preparation and ensuring adequate emotional support throughout. Uh, I mean, yeah. after having the baby, where are they going to be? Is it going to be in the mother's house or mother-in-law's house or separate house? You know, even small problems sometimes, uh, we blow them up into huge controversies. Okay. and cause a lot of emotional damage and harm, uh, which can tragically end in, um, you know, a death of a young mother. So it's important that the emotional needs are identified. There is proper planning. They are taught what are the problems that are going to come with the child. They are going to get less attention. There's going to be more trouble, more additional work. So all that has to be put into place. Okay. And that is very important. Thank you, Dr. Ganeshan and all three doctors for your inputs, which was very, very interesting. And I'm sure very knowledge, a lot of knowledge has been gained by the listeners in. And uh, let me move on to the next one. Now, um, we don't seem to have a national protocol to record deliberate self-harm hospital admissions, but there is a national protocol to record poisonings, including self-poisonings through the National Poisons Information Center, which is the NPIC. Admissions for self-poisonings in children and youth are rising. NPIC figures suggest that the self-harm rate is potentially many times larger than the suicide rate. In 2006, again, data, 
uh, has told us that 4,500 people suicided, but 93,000 people were admitted to hospital for self-poisoning. The annual health stats of 2016, which was the last one I managed to retrieve, shows 78,000 admissions for poisonings, which is 370 per 100,000. While that's why suicide have reduced since 1995, attempts at self-harm are rapidly increasing. Dr. Neil, one of the most important components of suicide prevention strategies should be to target people who attempt self-harm as they are high risk group. What is being done in Sri Lanka to follow up on individuals who are discharged from emergency departments, medical wards and mental health units so that the risk of future attempts can be minimized? Yeah, now the history is that until 1997, uh, suicidal act was regarded as a criminal offense. Yeah. But it was after 1997 that uh, criminality aspect has been removed, like in many other countries. Uh, so, so now the idea is that anyone who comes with a deliberate self-harm, uh, once the medical side has been cleared, you need to refer that person for psychosocial evaluation. So that is okay. what that is the standard. But of course, as we know, these standards are not being uh, carried out all the time. And uh, so, so there is a uh, uh, usually these people are generally lost. Uh, after the initial medical uh, treatment is over. Generally, I'm speaking in general terms, right? Okay. Uh, so that is something that probably we need to uh, yes. pay attention to. Uh, the other thing is that now you mentioned about the vast difference, 4,000 suicide and 93,000 suicidal attempts. But now again, we have to be careful all these, most of these 90,000 are actually the intention is not to commit suicide. Right. As I said earlier, the intention can be very different. It can be uh, uh, so the killing oneself may not be the main intention. Okay. It may be to gain attention, maybe to manipulate other people, or maybe it's just a reaction to a stress, ongoing stress. So, uh, but unfortunately, some of these people end up dying because yes. of the method used or whatever the circumstances, right? And uh, now, um, uh, and also the mode, if you look at the, the mode of these attempts also okay. has been changing, yes. right? Now, earlier it was usually pesticide poisoning. Yeah. Uh, but now it has changed. Now most of these, uh, what we call impulsive acts uh, are mainly due to uh, overdoses of tablets. Okay, prescription overdoses drugs. Of tablets. Yes, prescribed or non-prescribed over-the-counter drugs. Uh, so that is, so there is a tendency, there is a tendency. And in a way that is a better tendency because pesticide poison, yes. Uh, there is more chance to save the lives of the okay. person. So, so there are certain changes happening, but I think uh, we need to pay more attention because research has clearly shown yes. that, uh, the number of people who uh, so-called attempt suicide is actually increasing, though the suicide rates have been falling. Yes, and also, Doctor, the uh, data also shows that the people who finally complete suicide have attempted many times before. That is why it's necessary to target the attempts. Don't yes. you think so? Yeah, that is that is correct because the most important risk factor for suicide is a past attempt of yes suicidal behavior. That's, That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so, so that is why. Them. Yes, that is why we need to uh, look after them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neil. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Can Ganesh, I, would you yeah, can I add something? help us yes. with a Tamil response for this, please? In no, Tamil. I mean, yeah, okay. I'll answer in English ah, as okay. well. Sure, uh, sure, sure. See, Sorry. I mean, no, no. What you asked was important that uh, 
you know deliberate self harm is an important marker but worldwide the problem has been you know as it is a always a almost always a very impulsive act they themselves feel very bad about it and unfortunately uh, they don't keep appointments and they won't come for follow up okay because okay. that is something that yeah after deliberate self harm they okay. won't come for follow up because they don't want to talk about it this is a stupid thing i did i don't want to talk about yeah. it and they don't like to come That's and they don't like anybody reaching out to them as well so so this has been one of the big challenges uh, worldwide because we can have elaborate plans and systems to train uh, uh, try to call them back to a given appointment no they will not come and that is been the universal issue okay. Okay. so the தற்கொலைக்கு <laughs> அதுல என்ன பிரச்சனை என்று சொன்னால் தற்கொலை முயற்சி செய்யறாக்கள் அதை பற்றி கதைக்கவோ அதுக்கு உதவி எடுக்கவோ அதைக்கு விருப்பம் அதைக்கு அது வெக்கம் ஸோ அதைக்கு ஒரு அப்பாயின்மெண்ட்டை கொடுத்தாலோ அல்லது போன்ல கால் பண்ணி நாங்கள் கதை கவுன் பண்ணாலோ அதை அதுக்கு விரும்புகிறோம் இல்லை ஸோ இது ஒரு பெரிய பிரச்சனை Dr. Ganesan, thank you. And also that important point you brought up about uh, them not coming up for follow-up uh, treatment due to again shame or probably, you know, uh not interested in it so uh another question uh again an interesting question in 1984 sumitrio realized that over 35% of suicides were linked to alcohol use and abuse uh sumitrio is involved a lot in data processing as well as research that's how we get hold of these situations so then it was decided to set up malmadura as a rehab center and that's still going on from 1984 there is no data presently on how serious the situation is now but i came across the following studies which concern me one study in a place called uh, uh, gokarela found that 84% of all suicides had occurred after consuming alcohol Another Sri Lanka study stated that psychological autopsy of 372 suicides in rural SL Sri Lanka found that problem drinking or alcohol dependency was common among male suicides in 61% of cases while alcohol misuse in another family member contributed to 14% of female suicides Another Sri Lankan study in 19 in 159 admissions of attempted suicide 32% were visibly affected by alcohol Dr Ganesan can you elaborate on the connection between alcohol and substance abuse with impulsive self harming and suicide how best can we reduce this connection yes i mean that's a very strong connection between alcohol and uh, uh, suicide and deliberate self harm even having a parent who is using alcohol increases the self harm risk in children that alone is a high risk factor for children because of uh you know the issues associated in the home front due to the fathers very often the fathers drinking yeah so this is a very strong connection that we know of and uh, so it 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 as in association with the other risk factors like depression uh the domestic violence um, other risk factors in in in, in involved in this uh, it um, it has a big amplifying effect on the suicides uh so so we know that alcohol is a central nervous system depressant it causes depression but when immediately after alcohol uh, there can be some euphoria there can be some uh, calmness but alcohol is very well known to cause depression there's no two words about it that's very well known uh, but unfortunately again uh, culturally uh, we are struggling to deal with this alcohol problem in our country um uh, the alcohol industry is very powerful 
Uh, now earlier alcohol was sold in only particular places. Now all the supermarkets have started selling alcohol. That is a huge problem. Uh, and also the way society sees alcohol and alcoholic behavior, how it is tolerated by society is a huge problem. So somebody after alcohol is shouting or hitting other people, people are very unfortunately forgiving. And, and it's seen as a fashion, it's seen as a style, normalize it. And, and also uh, the way the alcohol industry has prevented the real term prices going up. One of the very important things we know uh, that helps in reducing alcohol consumption is availability and price plays a very important role. So the higher the price, higher the cost of alcohol, less people will drink. But unfortunately, our prices have not kept up with inflation or anything. So, so alcohol in real terms has become cheap and, and, and these are real concerns. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Doctor, when you talk about accessibility, which is very important, we ask the question always to policymakers, why are wine stores open at 10 o'clock in the morning? Whom are they catering to? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I mean, so this wine, is wine, wine stores, licenses. but before the opening hours, so that at least, you know, those people who are dependent on alcohol are not able to access it. Those are the morning drinkers, you know. Yes. So, so the problem is about issuing licenses. It's a very politicized, you know, lucrative method. Um, so the fish, the so there are major issues in that whole area. And you know, when it's something is politicized, the yeah. agencies who are supposed to monitor it also yeah. take a back step. Absolutely. And, and they are scared, you know, reasonably. So, yeah. so we have a lot of um, uh, system changes that has to be brought in into this whole thing. Okay. Uh, and it's destroying lives. It's destroying lives. Yes, doctor. So can I, can I also yes, add, of course, Dr. Yes, uh, to what Dr. Ganeshan said now. Um, so this is about the supply and demand. You see, <laughs> the, the thing called supply and demand. Increased supply and uh, increased demand. And uh, so we must always remember that there is an industry behind this and the industry is actually promoting alcohol from yeah. the supply side yeah. that is to supply means uh, manufacture and distribution of alcohol uh, and of course the demand is the thing that is coming from the community side so and um, so as uh, dr ganeshan pointed out very correctly the price is a very important part uh, so consumption and price also are related to each other. So more you more you consume, more you have problems. Yeah. Uh, so that is, and there was a very interesting study, five countries, uh, all Asian countries and all Buddhist countries. Okay. Uh, and they looked at uh, what are the people, uh, what are the things that they are drinking actually. They compared the five countries, including Sri Lanka. All countries were Buddhist countries in Asia and they they looked at if you take 100 people what do they drink okay that is about the alcohol the content uh, the, the the percentage of alcohol that is consumed yeah. and uh, it was very interesting Sri Lanka came as the highest okay. uh, so for example if you compare Burma and yeah. Burma or Myanmar I think now it's called uh, if 100 people drink, 85, 83% drink uh, beer, okay. right? So beer consumption, which contains about 8% alcohol. Okay. Now, if you compare Sri Lanka, if 100 people drink, 85% drink uh, spirits. Yeah. That is uh, Arak and I know, you know, the illicit, the Kasipu, yeah, the which has about 40% alcohol. Okay. So that itself shows that uh, our people are consuming more alcohol yeah. uh, in their drinks, right? And that also affects, as Dr. Ganeshan said, uh, affects the, the, the well-being of the person. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, so these are very interesting things. Uh, yes. So alcohol and um, suicide, alcohol and depression, all these are actually interrelated things. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neil and Dr. Ganeshan for those very important insights, uh, which I hope can, all of us... Can, can I add a small sentence? Of course, of yes. course. Uh, I mean, uh, Sri Lanka is a Buddhist country, uh, but there are significant other minorities also. Uh, like uh, Christians, Hindus, and Muslims, uh, except for the Muslim community, even they are, they are the alcohol consumption is going up now. Uh, it's a big problem in the Christian and the Hindu communities as well. Okay. That's interesting because those are trends that we need to study. So, okay, I'll just move on to the next question. Uh, the 2021 suicide stats from the police show the following trends. Actually, male to female ratio is now 4 to 1. 75% are married, people who take their lives. 50% are educated uh, between grade 1 and 8 only. 50%. 30% have O level. Uh, sorry, up to the O levels rather. 40% are aged between 15 and 35. Interestingly, 20% are over 66 years. 65% are employed. 35% unemployed. 66% died by strangling. Dr. Neil, your comments on these trends and how important is it to study suicide trends when formulating prevention strategies? Yeah, there, no doubt it's very important to study. Uh, now, you mentioned about the police. Now, when we talk of police, you have to be, uh, you have to be careful also. Now, yep. we know that uh, police uh, are the most reliable. Statistics are the most reliable when it comes to the, 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 the number of suicides. Because okay. as you know, suicide is regarded as an unnatural death. Okay. So, for in, in Sri Lankan law, un, all unnatural deaths must have a, uh, a inquest after yes. the death, and this is this inquest is carried out by the police, in the sense that organizing the inquest is done by the police. So, the police will have a lot of statistics on in relation to that. So, what you mentioned is all true. But if you look at, there is another column, the causes of suicide. Yes. That is the place where you have to be careful. Uh, because the, the what they mention under causes of suicide is what is mentioned at the inquest. By the relatives. By, by the, the survivors. By the survivors. By the relatives. You're right, now, yes. you understand the mental state of the survivor. Yes. Now, suicide is a sudden unexpected death. Yeah. causing great trauma to the survivors, the family yeah. members. Yeah. So they are in a very traumatic situation and the inquest yeah. is held very soon after the death. And uh, and uh, they the body is not released until the, the inquest is over and the relatives have to find some, uh, some uh, uh, reason yeah. uh, for the suicide. Uh, so... Well, usually what happens is that it is the immediate preceding uh, stress is that is highlighted yes, as yes. the cause. I, and, I, and, that is, and that is what is uh, stated in the police statistics, yes. which is actually not true. Yes. I'll give a good example. A study was done yeah. by Dr. Anil Abe Singh, a psychiatrist at Peradeniya. Yeah. A group of, uh, they studied... Uh, Suicides reported in the Candy District uh, over a period of three months in the okay. papers. These suicides were reported in the papers. Yeah. And they, they, they studied and they found out that actually 90% in that study, 90% of the suicides after a psychological autopsy was related to undetected depression yeah. and alcohol uh, problem, uh, but that is what that is not what it was reported in the press. Yes, they were giving very trivial things, right? Yeah. So you need to actually go into deeper aspects to actually find out. So police statistics are good with regard to the numbers, uh, but 
I think you have to be careful. I know. Getting the causes. In fact, yeah. doctor, on the causes, they give uh, alcohol and drugs. There's only four percent. Yeah. Can I come in? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. The, the, the one reason is also one of the reasons is that the the the, uh, the relations are revealing the things to the the law enforcement uh, officers. So this is not the true picture. That is one thing. When a medical person or some, someone uh, away from the, the law enforcement agencies are involved, I think we can get a good picture. And we, are, we, we will be uh, doing this also. Uh, as I told you earlier, the, the, country, the country situation was not okay. conducive to continue that but as now it's high yes. time uh, we will uh, uh, execute this uh, the That's process good. good news yeah. dr neil was talking about uh, the mental health of survivors and i have a question on that the mental health of survivors and bereaved relatives is very important to address bereavement or grief due to suicide is experienced very differently from mourning of a loss by natural causes Stigma associated with suicide plays a big role and family and friends find it very difficult to reach out and unsure what words of comfort should be offered. As a result, a kind of wall of silence is built by friends, family and the community who may discuss the suicide in hushed tones amongst themselves. Survivors may go through feelings of guilt or blame that they were the cause or did not do the needful to prevent the suicide. They may choose to deal with it by denial or even avoiding discussing it. If the grieving process is not allowed to proceed, some survivors may place themselves at risk for suicide. It is very important that the bereaved seek assistance, but the stigma often prevents them from seeking help. Dr. Ganeshan, your views on this? Yeah, this is a very important topic. Uh, I mean, each suicide affects at least 17 people quite seriously. Uh, it's not only the family, even friends, uh, very close ones because uh, they, they also feel a sense of betrayal. You know, they, he didn't share it with me. She didn't tell me. Um, yeah. I could have helped. Uh, you know, I was a friend. I was close to her. But how did I miss it? So so there's a lot of guilt. Uh, yes. Anger and all the uh, things associated with grief are uh, there in deliberate in suicide deaths. And it's actually more, as you said. And uh, it's very important that the family gets the support. You know, I mean, one of the things we say is suicide is not preventable, very difficult to prevent it. When somebody really wants to die, uh, it's, 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 it's very difficult to stop it at that point. So, uh, and, and also uh, to help them to go and uh, we, we try to fix it into their, uh, uh, you know, lack of understanding of there are close people that I can talk to, there are family members who will be helping me, and, yeah. and the person failed to see those things. So, so we make sure that the blame is not on the survivors, right? Okay. And it's, it's cruel okay. even to think of that. Uh, so it's, it's, we have to be very careful how we talk. Yes. And also, like you said, you know, avoiding them, uh, not going to their houses, avoiding talking about it, yeah. it's not fair. We should not do that. Yes. We should be there for them to talk and we should then treat them as normally as possible Yeah, and also be there to support and, and that's yes. very, very important. I also know, yes. Doctor, when, when there is a suicide in the family, they find it very difficult to give their daughter in marriage because uh, people feel that there's mental illness in the family. Okay. So that again, we have to be very careful to, 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 to tell people that this is a, you know, a, a, a problem solving approach. Yes. Uh, I mean, this is not a serious mental illness. Yes. We, we need to. Yes. Doctor, okay. can you give us a quick take on this, on your answer in Tamil, please? Oh, my bad. I mean, the Udarnamaho were that Kulain get at the tap, Padinel, Padinet to Pere, Mihao Malamaha Padikid, in the Kurumbata Matamella, Nanberhel, Nandiha Ibuda, the Padikid, Enendal Nana, the friend, 
அவையேன்னு நினைக்க சொல்ல இல்ல அவள் ஏதாவது நடந்திருக்குன்னு நான் அதை கவனிக்காம விட்டுட்டேனோ என்றெல்லாம் அவைக்கு மனதுக்குள்ள எத்தனையோ குற்ற உணர்வுகள் எழுந்து கொண்டிருக்கும் அஹ் அதே மாதிரித்தான் குடும்பத்தவர்களுக்கும் அவர்களுக்கும் மனதில எவ்வளவோ விதமான குற்ற உணர்வுகள் ஏற்படுகின்றிருக்கும் அப்ப அவைக்கு நாங்கள் அதுல இருந்து மீண்டு வாழ்றதுக்கு உதவி செய்யறது எங்கள் எல்லாருடையும் கடமை அது அந்த குற்ற உணர்வு வளராத விதத்துல அஹ் இல்ல நீங்க ஒண்ணு செய்திருக்கீங்களா அது யாரும் தற்கொலை செய்ய சாரு முடிவெடுத்தா அதை நிப்பாட்டுறது வேலை கஷ்டம் சொல்லாட்டி நாங்கள் எப்படி அதை கண்டுபிடிக்கிறது சொன்னீங்களா அதை நிப்பாட்டிருக்க இயலாது போன்ற ஆறுதல் வார்த்தைகளை சொல்லி அஹ் அந்த குற்ற உணர்வு வர்றதுல இருந்து தடுக்கிறதோட நாங்கள் அவையோட சாதாரணமா இந்த வீடுகளுக்கு போய் அவையோட கதைச்சு அவையோட பழகிறது அந்த அவையையும் சமூகத்துல உள்வாங்கிறது எங்களோட உறவுகளை பழுதாக்காம உள்வாங்கிறத வந்து அவைக்கு பெரிய ஒரு ஆறுதலை கொடுக்கும் ஆகவே இதை நாங்கள் ஞாபகத்துல வச்சிருக்கிறது மிக மிக முக்கியம் மானசிக்கலி <laughs> உதாரண <laughs> உதாரணம் வார்த்தாக்கிரணி சமாஜேதுவஸ்தாவிதிமட்ட மகிதன்மே <laughs> ஒன்ன <laughs> women are also more likely than men to have stronger social networks and to seek counsel or medical support our 221 data shows the male female ratio of deaths by suicide is 4 to 1 now in sri lanka dr neel could the reason for more men to self harm be connected to the gender stereotypes embedded in our into our culture and reinforced by role models and media would you like to comment on that yeah that may play a part and also as you said i think you partly gave the answer also <laughs> we can uh, have uh, uh, as you said more social networks yes network connections uh, and also they the 
they come to uh, come to the medical attention more than the men yes uh, so that is why uh, illnesses in women are detected uh, earlier than illnesses in men uh, because of the medical contact and sometimes these things are picked up in the in the medical uh, field as well uh, the emotional distress and things like that uh, whereas in the males uh, i think they also uh, they find it difficult to uh, bring out their emotions that is one aspect okay. emotional expression is reduced compared to males uh, females okay as well as uh, of course the alcohol also okay. there's a control there they tend to use more alcohol to sort of bury or hide the okay that's uh, interesting yes that's and the emotional aspect so these are all interesting areas yes, uh, yes. but as, as a fact what you said is quite true okay thank you thank you very much uh, dr ganeshan a quick uh, round up on that in tamil would be nice பல காரணங்கள் இருக்கு ஆண்கள் உதவி எடுக்கிறது குறைவு உதவி பெற்றுக் கொள்றது குறைவு இந்த சமூக தொடர்புகளும் இதை பற்றி கதைக்கக்கூடிய மாதிரி நட்புகள் தங்களுக்கு இருக்கிற பிரச்சனை கதைக்கக்கூடிய அளவுக்கு நட்புகள் இருக்கிறது இல்லை மற்றது இந்த மது பாவனையும் ஒரு அவை இந்த சற்குல வீதங்கள் அதிகமா இருக்கிறதுக்கு ஒரு முக்கிய காரணமா இருக்கு okay thank you so much so then the media also needs to reduce or eliminate altogether the sensationalism associated with suicide reporting as all of you know they must avoid giving graphic details of the method used and avoid using words like commit which makes it sound like a crime providing details of the mechanism and procedure used to carry out a suicide may lead to the imitation of suicidal behavior by other people at least they can avoid simplistic explanations for suicide they must encourage public understanding of the complexity of suicide avoid labeling places as suicide hotspots above all if a suicide helpline is given at the end of the report it will help other vulnerable people with suicidal thoughts to make contact and prevent an impending suicide dr ganesan your views on this i mean yes the media's role is uh, very very important um and and, and in sri lanka media has been pretty good until fairly recently uh, where was a guideline again i think one of the under one of the previous presidents uh, a committee was set up uh, to give media recommendations and to some extent they were implemented okay. but unfortunately uh, uh, it's kind of a decaying a little bit now so it's good time that we visited it again and okay. came up with some new media guidelines and also unfortunately um, Uh, no such guideline seems to exist in india uh, so lots of uh, movies and uh, uh, indian media which is a uh, uh, lot of people do watch here uh, and listen and read uh, okay. and they are it is highlighted and, and and so that is a problem that i don't know yeah. how we can overcome okay. uh, so media playing a very responsible role is very important okay so uh, the last can question I, I, sorry yes I, of course of course can i also add in singhala of course please me madhya sa siya devi nasa gani vartha karne pilibanda eka ita hari vadagat nan oba danna ape rata ape rata e siya devi nasa gani varak vime pratipatyak tiyena ratawal atolosen eka ape rata anidega me pratipatya ma वार्ता आकार uh, 
ඉතින් මේ තවත් මම තමයි මූලික වශයෙන් මේ ප්‍රතිපත්තිය තිබුණු නිර්දේශ ඉතින් ඒවා මොකක් වෙලාවට මේක ඒ විදිහටම කෙරෙන්නේ නැහැ දැන් මාධ්‍ය කිව්වම මෙතනදී අපි මත තියාගන්න ඕන මාධ්‍ය තුනක් තියෙනවා මුද්‍රිත මාධ්‍ය විද්‍යුත් මාධ්‍ය සහ සමාජ මාධ්‍ය සෝෂල් මීඩියා ඉතින් මේ හැම එකකම දැන් මේවායි සමහර ඒවාලව මේ සියදිවි නහගන්න ආකාරයේම වීඩියෝ කරලා එහෙම පෙන්වන අවස්ථාත් තියෙනවා ඉතින් මේවා ඇත්තම වක් වෙලාවට සියදිවි නසා ගැනීම ප්‍රොමෝට් කරන්න උදව් වෙන බව බොහොම පැහැදිලිව පෙන්වලා තියෙනවා ඉතින් ඒ නිසා මේ මාධ්‍ය වාර්තා කරන්නේ පිළිබඳව මම හිතන්නේ මම පෞද්ගලිකව මේ කටයුත්තට දායක වෙලා තියෙනවා 2000 දෙදහ වසර ඉඳලා වගේ ඉතින් නම අවුරුදු විසි දෙකක් ගිහිල්ලා මම නම් තාම සතුටු වෙන්නේ නැහැ අපේ මාධ්‍ය මේ මේ වගකීම හරියාකාරව කරන එක සම්බන්ධව ඉතින් ගයිඩ් ලයින්ස් හදලා තියෙනවා මොන තරම් ගයිඩ් ලයින්ස් හදලා තියෙනවා නමුත් ඒවා ඉතින් පිළිපැදින විදිය තමයි ප්‍රශ්නේ තියෙන්නේ ඉතින් මම හිතන්නේ ඒක අපි නැවත 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 කතා කළ යුතු කාරණයක් වෙනවා මේ වගේ දවස් වල ඕකේ තැන්කියු වෙරි මච් ඩොක්ටර් නීලන් ඩොක්ටර් ගණේසන් දැට් ඉම්පෝර්ටන්ට් ක්වෙස්චන් සෝ වන් ලාස්ට් ක්වෙස්චන් which i hope all three doctors can contribute is about interventions when sri lanka had the highest suicide in the world in 1995 a presidential task force for prevention was formed which led to the implementation of several preventive measures the most significant of these being the banning of certain class 1 pesticides other notable measures include the decriminalization of self harm attempts measures to ensure responsible media reporting introduction of life skills in school curricula and teaching undergraduate and postgraduate medical students the assessment of persons who had engaged in self harm and after care dr neil how successful have all these been were all of them implemented and should policy makers and stakeholders sit together again and plan new strategies yeah i mean any any policy has to be updated with time now when this uh, policy was uh, brought forward the mode of suicide the predominant mode of suicide was pesticide poison yeah so obviously out of the six recommendations three were related to pesticide poison okay which is something that we can understand okay. now we know that it is not the pesticide poisoning yeah. now the highest suicide more method is yeah. hanging so the methods have changed and also certain other uh, things have changed over the period of time so as you said suicide policies also need to be looked at from time to time and uh, uh, it has to be updated but now uh, what you said all those things were started now for example teaching life skills in schools that was started right uh, all six from 6 to 9 year 6 7 sorry 7 8 9 grades uh, there were it was included in the curriculum initially as life skills that was the subject signal and give a given nipunata right uh, that was a sub- but that was a subject that was not tested at an exam okay right so as a result of that you know our schools no? okay. they want results so uh, what really happened was that actually there was a study done by a, uh, by a postgraduate uh, on the effectiveness of this uh, life skills program how effective is life skills program and it was very clear that it is not effective though it is there in the curriculum it is not adhered to uh, because it is not a examination examination tested subject okay. so most of the time that is allocated to that has been given to math science and various okay. other things which are more important from a principal's point of view than life, life skills. Okay. The other thing is, then, then what happened is that I'm just telling what is what evolved. Then life skills, was, though it was a separate subject, now it is not a separate subject. Now it is called Puravasi Adhyapani. 
එහෙම කියලා ලයිෆ් ස්කිල් එකත් ඒකට ඇතුල් කරලා වෙන කතාවකුත් එක්ක තමයි යන්නේ සෝ දැට් ඉස් වන් තින් අද තින් ඉස් ද ටීචර්ස් හු ආ ලොකේටඩ් ටු දැට් ලයිෆ් ස්කිල්ස් ආ ආ ආ ආ ආ ආ ආ ආ referring to that study done by one of the post graduate trainees okay. uh, indicates very clearly that the the most inefficient teachers if i if i if i use that word are the ones that have been allocated to this subject right <laughs> <laughs> so it's very sad it's very sad it's very sad so though it is there in the book uh, what actually comes out of it is not very good so so i think uh, we need to revisit that uh, so life skills education also it should not be only in schools so it should be also yeah. in the universities as well and, uh, and also for parents and teachers to tertiary education institutions yes uh, they need uh, life skills education yes, yes yes so thank you thank you dr neel and dr ganesan any inputs from you on this yeah i mean i mean i mean blaming the school system alone is not good enough the parents also have to take some responsibility unfortunately uh, memorizing and putting it out in exams uh, uh, and seeking jobs based on that and prestige as put is putting a lot of pressure on children and they grow up uh, without with less and less life skills so the school has to play a role and the parents also has to play a role I mean, one of the big problems we have is poor problem-solving skills. When we face a problem, how do we solve it? Unfortunately, children are not allowed to do that. You, you wait. We will tell you what to do. The parents always uh, kind of a, direct the children. And when they are in a situation where there are no parents to direct, or there are issues that they can't discuss with the parents, yeah. then the children don't know what to do. So, so these are very important areas. You know how we bring up our children, how we educate our children. It's very, very important. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dr. Ganesan and Dr. Ratnayak. I would like to hear something from you. Ah, yes. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, the, the education ministry is uh, changing some of the as uh, as Dr. Neil Fernando said. Yes, some yeah, it has happened uh, sometimes as punishment. the teachers were allocated to the subject but now it is being changed and the directorate of mental health uh, uh, has a uh, as an expert committee on uh, suicide prevention so this is a functioning body and uh, uh, we think that an expert committee or or, or some so some other the, the 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 hierarchical body should come under prime minister or president right okay. because this is a there's a high, highly prioritized public health area also and the most of the the factors lie outside the health system but it was not the the government policy that time okay. so and uh, we have come up with uh, um, So, uh, the strategic plan and action plan which are being piloted now nowadays and uh, we will be able to uh, the the disseminate in uh, maybe within a month's time I okay suppose. that's good news dr ratnayak very good news so but dear doctors i do hope that you enjoyed answering my questions and now it's time for you to answer questions from the attendees so can i start off So I think sure. the first one is uh, directed to Dr. Ganeshan. Does NIMH provide any support to those who are struggling to get a family member who is mentally ill but refusing to accept it to seek medical support? Is there any other form of support available to the family to get the mentally ill person to seek medical support? Yeah, the good question, the current issue. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Uh, there are some problems with the current mental health act for us okay. to go ahead with that that is one issue okay. uh, and in spite of that we did try doing that for some time okay. uh, about 4 or 5 years ago uh, but unfortunately the government system of you know allocating an ambulance and what the ambulance goes for are a problem so unfortunately that service is not provided by name much it's up to the families to find some private people or get the help from police uh, to bring them to hospital and I, it's a highly unsatisfactory situation 
So first okay. we have to amend the mental health act, which is old and uh, not working, okay. uh, which should happen soon. And also we need to develop that service. Yes. Yeah, okay. Dr. Ganesh, and uh, it's been amended now. We met uh, the 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 minister, uh, Vijayda, Mr. Vijayas Rajapaksha, also recently with the College of uh, the, the Psychiatrist. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this question is uh, has been directed to Dr. Ratnayaka. Uh, what measures has the Ministry of Health taken to educate medical staff, nurses? minor staff, etc., on how to support and treat suicide attempt survivors. Is there work happening to sensitize them around treating attempt survivors with respect while maintaining their dignity? Yes. Uh, to a certain extent, it's happening, but I don't say that uh, to a satisfactory level. Yeah. Uh, that we have to take the responsibility for that also. And uh, as I said, so all these are in the, the suicide uh, strategy in that package, right? So we so, uh, uh, to tell you, uh, the, we have uh, initiated the first program in Kilinochi uh, uh, yesterday and day before. Okay. Yeah, dignity, yes, dignity is a problem uh, all over the country. Uh, <laughs> I think this refers to the kind of uh, self esteem that a patient is reduced to, you know, when he's maybe scolded in the hospital, or, you know, people feel that, you know, it's just uh, something done for attention seeking and, you know, they kind of uh, minimize the issue. Anyway, thanks, Dr. Ratnaika. This can next I, question is uh, uh, to Dr. Uh, Neeraj. Sorry. Can I, yeah. yes. can I add to that? Of course. I mean, to some extent, uh, the, the problem part of the responsibility has to be taken by our patients as well. Okay. Whenever there is a poor quality service, whenever somebody is rude, they have a responsibility and a duty to complain about it. So hospitals, health services run out of people's money and they have all the right uh, to ensure that good quality is there. So, in some ways, anonymously or somewhere, it's not for suicide or any other thing. People should bring it up. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, this question is uh, to Dr. Neil Fernando. Uh, we know that certain high-risk occupations, like being a medical doctor, nurse, etc., can increase the risk of suicide due to easy access to means. We saw this happen during the first lockdown when COVID-19 started. Are there measures taken by medical administration to, uh, to ensure that there are safeguards in place and that there is a there is mental health support offered for health professionals? Yeah, uh, prop, so I think uh, there is no specific uh, measures that I know of. Probably Dr. Rohan Ratnak might be a better person to answer this. Okay. Uh, I'm very sure about the current uh, trends that is happening in the health ministry. But uh, what the point is well, very well taken. That is very important. Um, um, the uh, health workers are also at a risk. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, studies have shown that certain health workers are more at risk than others. So uh, and, uh, treating the health workers... Uh, has been a problem actually, this is not only in our country, but in other countries as well. The sick doctor, uh, <laughs> doctor means it's not only the doctors, the other include the other frontline workers. workers. Frontline workers. So whether there is a specific program to address that issue, as far as I know, there is no such program, but probably I, I stand to be corrected. Probably Rohan might be able to give a definitive answer. Yes, uh, sir. yes. The, we conducted uh, the, the, the one program uh, during COVID time, but I think uh, this, uh, yeah, uh, we have to continue that. Even after that, even after the epidemic or any other the, the emergencies, so this has to be a continuous and sustainable 
process. So, okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I think this next question is uh, about uh, my question about maternal suicides. Uh, it says the Edin Edinburgh scale that is administered as a screening for pregnant women may not be effective as questionnaires rarely bring out complexities in a person's life during pregnancy. Can midwives and others be trained to conduct a more comprehensive risk assessment? Uh, can I answer that? Because uh, yes. I was involved in this uh, validation of this okay. uh, Edin Edinburgh scale. Okay. Okay. The original research, uh, I was also involved. Uh, actually, it is, it's a screening test. So please remember that okay. screening tests are screeners, right? Okay. So it uh, the, the it depends on the sensitivity of the yes. test to detect uh, depression. And that is why we do it at the end of one month to catch more yeah. and more people uh, because we know that depression generally starts around the second week. Okay. So that is why one month is that is after another two weeks okay. to catch more people. But yes, it's a self-administered question here. Uh, now, like all self-administered questionnaire, if you are not honest, then you will not detect, right? But yeah. at least this is detecting coming. That is the important thing. We may not detect everyone who is depressed or who might get depressed. Okay. But at least it is detecting people and um, the system is there so that okay. uh, doctors get a chance to actually look at them. Uh, so I think uh, it is that now they are thinking of even administering it before the pop. Now this is after the delivery, okay. during the pregnancy, whether okay. whether it can be uh, depression can be detected and even mental uh, ill health can be detected. So yeah. there is a uh, there is a possibility that uh, women will be screened even antenatally. Uh, okay. On health issues, uh, very yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Thank uh, you, Dr. Neil. Anit, take a thumb. Yeah, I'm going to see how you can 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 see how Amalata Samahara Velata may make again a significant second cacola, then Samahara Velata, Emayoti, you know, I put a then looking in a result a key heart may have to win the point. name at the term. Anitaka scale a key, you suicidal be suicidally take again a hearty in your tea. I put a evagi components. Ekolang, Eka, 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 Busy clinic, may put packing hard villa, Nita is a make a Karanaka Tika Kapasu. It is at them, Matitana, Badat, Pratipala Daika, midwife, Gither, Gila, Massacre of Passe, a visit to Kakarla, Gither the May, may, may make a Karanapurang, Matitana, meet at Vada, Projala Peki like a Magi, Paul Gilikada has. But it in Wakula, the winner, Massacre, Massacre to Passe, Baba again, and Barakira. It could have a mind who will have to make up the administer when anything are done on a picnic set up a gay Mauer room, Evela with the Gulutin, the Buddha Ikman together. I think are a Mihagana may hurry at a barala utter than it not to anything. Him a damn, I think. One of a screening test take a tea and a get Lutino metana. Have I a picky and donor? People are identified by this screening test and referred to. Uh, the mental health professions, and that okay. that is something that we need to uh, appreciate. Thanks, uh, Dr. Neil. Uh, this one, doctors, we have just about five minutes to go to light the candle. 
Uh, so try to run through this fast. I don't want to disappoint the people who ask the questions. Suicide is often linked quite strongly with depressive illness. However, I am curious to know why we don't talk enough about other mental illnesses like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and perhaps certain personality disorders and their association with suicide and self-harm. Dr. Ganesan? Uh, yes, I mean, there is an association and that's the right question. But uh, if you take the numbers, I mean, the depression is far, far more common than schizophrenia or bipolar or personality disorders. So therefore, uh, and, and the, the suicidal risk is also slightly higher when people are having depression. But yes, it does. Uh, 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 it is a problem for other people also, and they need to talk about that as well. Your idea. That's great. A uh, quick question, Dr. Neil, from somebody. Uh, what would be the current Sri Lankan socioeconomic effect, the emotional health of individuals who find it difficult to fulfill daily needs? Isn't poverty play risk of suicide thought? Or involving to be distorted, yeah, but yeah, very, very short answer. Poverty and mental health is related to they are connected. Mental okay. illnesses and poverty are related. There is a what we call a vicious cycle, Vishama Chakra, Mamanasika Roga, Kadunama, Daridratawe, Vadivena, Daridratawe, Vadunama, Manasika Roga, Tatut Sanveno. The Medicata, a bomaki to someone the active. I think any sir, then at a may appear at a minusu muna then a may ada maduima, the Ridratawe, Neva Kelima, Unge Mansik, Saukata, Animarema Balapan. Okay, thanks. Is Dr. Ganeshan, are you there? Dr. Ganeshan? Yeah, I'm here. Yes. This one for you, one minute. Yes. Dr. Ganeshan, can you please expand on being sensitive to shame? Yes, so <laughs> that's the question that takes more time, but it's okay. So basically, accepting me as I am, right? So as a human being, I have abilities that I'm good at, and there are lots of things that I'm not good at. When I make mistakes, and, and, and that's part of being human. So yeah. ac accepting me who as I am, and, and also valuing me who as I am, not necessarily based on other people's assessment. Yeah. I know who I am, full stop. But others think about me, I'm not that much for that. I do what I think right. If I make mistakes, I correct them, and I'm not ashamed of that. Okay. And, and bringing up children to kind of a, in that way, to what we call uh, internal locus of control, knowing what you are doing okay. is right or wrong, and working on it. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, doctors. I do hope you all enjoyed being here with us today. Uh, and uh, I think your answers were really fantastic and would have given all the people a lot of knowledge and awareness about suicide and other things too. So can I place on record my our very grateful thanks to three of you for gracing this occasion and uh, participating so willingly with us, so warmly and so humbly with us, I would say, which is really fantastic. So thank you again. And uh, we are just, um, can we light this candle now? People who are able to, these are our contact numbers for anybody who needs help uh, or needs some, or knows somebody who needs help can contact Somitrio. And also anybody who needs help with addiction, anyone is struggling with uh, addiction issues can contact uh, Mel Madura. These are the numbers for Mel Madura. Uh, this is my candle. So thank you very much. It's just eight o'clock and we are closing. Thank you very much for everyone who found the time to zoom in and thank you to the panelists for their time and the expertise. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.